one time, the Haida had more than 24 villages along what is now the northwestern coast of British Columbia and southeast Alaska. Carving and raising of their totem poles was a sacred yet commonplace event during those pre-European contact times. Now there are only two Haida villages left in Alaska, but the spirit of Haida culture is making a strong resurgence. NWIN's Morgan Howard has a story. It took master carver Stan Marsden and his assistants more than one year. But now, Kassan welcomes its first pole in more than 70 years. Kassan wanted a totem pole to signify the reawakening of Haida culture and revitalization of community. Stan Marsden was the ideal choice. Marsden is a Simpsian master carver and one of only a handful of totem pole carvers in southeast Alaska. A, a pole tells stories, it tells uh, history and uh, time, time in, the, uh, in your lifetime, you know, and then the family tree or, or family lore. He's my right hand man. He feels strongly about passing along native culture by carving trying to pass it on to our younger people. When the kids see that, understand that, you know, it really opens their eyes. It brings out the, their own self-esteem. You know, it wakes them up. The village has waited decades for this special day, its first totem pole in modern history. At one time, there were at least 24 Haida villages, and the beaches represented the culture with some of the finest totem poles and clan houses. But adverse living conditions forced these villages to migrate and consolidate. Haida villages were hit with foreign illnesses and food shortages. As the people struggled to survive, cultural activities such as carving totem poles went away. As the population dropped, so did the Haida language speakers. In recent years, Kassan has fought back against rising energy costs and high unemployment. Haidas are now experiencing a cultural resurgence with renewed interest in learning the language and participating in cultural activities. We had a group of elders probably about a decade ago, maybe 15 years ago, that really made a strong push to incorporate culture into our curriculum and to pass it down to a new generation. The current generation understands the importance of saving their culture and their endangered Haida language. Haida language is in such dire straits, there's only a handful of fluent speakers left. And if we can give this back to ourselves, we can make ourselves whole again. Today's leaders look for new ways to involve their culture, such as tourism. We have to keep our culture at the forefront uh, and start to use that as our economic base in holding activities like this, drawing people in, sharing our culture, and letting them know that we're still here. Part of Kassan's revitalization is to bring their people home. Included in the totem pole celebration, is Kassan's dedication of a new school and six new homes. We have people that lived in Kassan. We have people that never lived in Kassan and came here because we had housing. We're able to expand tribal programs because of that. With the pole finally in place, Clinket, Haida, and Simpson dancers celebrate with songs their ancestors once sang when totem poles were found on every Haida shore. It takes more than just carving a pole, it takes a whole community working together. And that's the basis for our culture, is, is the togetherness of working. This totem pole represents unity, a community coming together and using their history and culture to move forward with strength and prosperity. For Northwest Indian News, I'm Morgan Howard.